Good evening. Welcome to the State of Business on Art Television with me, Tiranta Gunawardena. Let's take a look at today's top stories first. Sri Lanka and the IMF reach staff level agreement on fifth review of extended fund facility. Sri Lanka's urbanisation is 48%, says Minister Partly Champika Ranavaka. Now news in detail. The International Monetary Fund has reached a staff level agreement with Sri Lanka on the fifth review of Sri Lanka's extended fund facility. A staff team from the International Monetary Fund led by Manuela Goretti visited Colombo during February 14 to the 28, 2019 to resume discussions on the fifth review under Sri Lanka's economic reform program supported by a three-year extended fund facility arrangement. At the end of the visit, Goretti issuing a statement said that the team welcomes the Sri Lankan authorities' ongoing efforts to bring their economic reform program back on track following the political turmoil of late 2018 and that the team reached understandings at the staff level with the Sri Lankan authorities on the fifth review and their request to extend the EFF arrangement for an additional year with the remaining disbursements to be evenly spread over this period to allow more time for the completion of the economic reform agenda. Subject to the planned submission to Parliament of 2019 budget, consistent with the EFF-supported program, the Board is expected to consider Sri Lanka's request for completion of the fifth review in May 2019. The team met with Prime Minister Ronil Vikramasinghe, Minister of Finance Mangala Samarvira, State Minister of Finance Iran Vikramaratna, Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, other public officials and representatives of the business community, civil society and international partners. The 34th CEO Network Forum organized by Art Television under the theme Megapolis – Dream to Reality was held in Colombo, featuring the Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, partly Champika Ranavaka, as the keynote speaker. While delivering his keynote address, Minister Ranavaka expressed the following regarding the urbanization of Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now tell you about yet another major aspect on which we need to base our national development strategies in profiting from those comparative advantage, that is our degree of urbanization. Here we see the night time Sri Lanka. Most of these parts actually, the Vilpattu and Yala and various other strictly conserved forest areas. Although our statistics department says that uh, Sri Lanka's urban population is just 18% because of these uh, those who are living within the administratively recognized urban limits. But a new parameter to determine your urban life, your urban aspiration, it's now approximately 48% of the Sri Lankans now enjoy urban life. Elaborating further, the minister expressed the following on development processes implemented by the Ministry of Megapolis and Western Development. When I was given this newly created ministry, the Ministry of uh, Megapolis and Urban Development, in September 2015, we didn't want to go ahead with the approach of urban development that has been popularly followed in this country for quite some time. Superficial beautification of the city without addressing the issues of aging infrastructure, absurd, disjoint construction, etc., aimed at short-term political popularity. Instead, we embarked upon a scientific planning process and formulated the most comprehensive integrated spatial development plan in the history of this country. A comprehensive national physical plan for the whole country till 2050. You can see we have identified four main corridors. The main corridor is from Colombo to Trincomalee, whereas you can open up the Trincomalee port to the Bay of Bengal, the China, Far East, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, and countries uh, like the Indochina region. And you can open up Colombo to the Middle East, West, Central Asia, and Africa, the eastern coast of Africa. And the other corridor from Gaul to Tisamaharam, and other one from Batikolo to Ampara, and one from Jaffna to Kilnochi, and some other nine centers like Kandy. Anuradhapura, Vaunia, Radnapura, Vallavai, Putlam, uh, and other cities. So we call them as strategic cities to fuel these four main uh, economic corridors. The World Renewable Energy Congress has decided to hold its 19th session at Sri Lanka under the theme Green Colombo. Speaking at the press conference held to announce the event, Chairman of the WREC, Ali Saik, expressed the following. There are four issues, four directions um, Sri Lanka can take. The photovoltaic, which is direct, sun to electricity. Secondly, you can use solar thermal, of course, you know, anything to heat 
with the sun. If you cannot heat by the sun, how can we at the moment ourselves have a 12 gigawatt made from PV in UK? How come we have five gigawatt made from wind? So you can use wind energy in various parts. You can use biomass because you have a green Colombo. You have a lot of greenery. Waste to energy. Waste to energy now is a reality. You know, if you think how much in the Middle East people throw food, you know, 150 kilogram a day is thrown away. That could be incinerated and produce electricity. So there are many issues which you have to start. And I, I was really, I was surprised, but uh, His Excellency, you know, we, we were concentrated in Sri Lanka in tourism, which is fantastic. And you achieve a lot. Now you should concentrate in green issues because it's your children, your grandchildren. You don't want to die at the age of 50. You know, the average age at the moment is about 80. You know, so there's a 30 years you can earn by having a cleaner, a better environment. And this is, this is really the global issue. It's not a case I'm saying it. It is a reality. So I, you can't say to your children, no, 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 never mind. The earth is too big. The space is too big. We only have 200 kilometers of space and that of air. If we fill that all with CO2, and then believe me, we just roast it ourselves. We be just like a roasted oven. And therefore, we've got to do something about it. Yeah. It's time for a short commercial break. Do stay tuned for more news after this. Welcome back. Speaking at the press briefing held at the Central Bank regarding the Monetary Policy Review, Governor of the Central Bank Dr. Indudit Kumaraswamy expressed the following on reasons why the growth rate has been hovering around 3% since 2001. Well, as I said, you know, it's a very big difference whether, we are, whether you're a, a country which is getting a demographic dividend or not. Because it's very easy to get growth. Because you, when your population is increasing, all you have to do is you add labor. Uh, you, what they call labor augmentation. Growth is driven by labor augmentation. When that goes away, as I said, it's much, much more difficult to get growth. Because then it has to be through productivity improvements. Through, you know, and for that you need innovation, all that which is a much more difficult way of achieving growth. So to achieve 4% or 5% is much tougher when you don't have a demographic dividend. But having said that, having said that, because that's not the only reason, right, why, why growth is 3%. I mean, clearly, um, as I said, I do feel in terms of macroeconomic policy making, we have moved in the right direction. Uh, but uh, there is no doubt, uh, you know, there is political uncertainty in the country, and that's a factor, that is a factor. And it's very important that we have a political, greater political certainty. Elaborating further, Governor Kumaraswamy expressed the following on how Jamaica coped with the economic crisis. Jamaica was probably worse than us in terms of similar, you know, a multi-party system, very robust politics, fiscal deficits a major problem, their export growth got affected. So generally, Jamaica was in the doldrums. And they're also a middle-income country, so they couldn't get concessional money. They were exposed to rating agencies and capital markets, and they were generally in a big mess, bigger mess than us. What has happened in the last five, six years is that the two major political parties came, came to a consensus on the economic package. Politics is still robust, but they come together on what the economic policy framework should be. And there has been a dramatic improvement in Jamaica's economic performance. So clearly, I think if one can have that kind of consensus in terms of what the policy framework should be, that would be greatly beneficial for the country. The parties didn't, I mean, the, you know, the politics was still there, and it was robust, and it was adversarial. But both sides in the national interests declared they signed up to one, one economic policy framework. Asia Property Awards, hosted by Asia's leading property technology company, Property Guru, is scheduled to be held on the 26th of July 2019. Speaking at the press conference held yesterday to announce the event, Chairman of the Independent Panel of Judges, the Asia Property Awards 2019, Nirmal De Silva, expressed the following on how location plays an important role in real estate. Now, 
there is this norm that real estate is all about location, 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 Pradeep, right? But uh, I have a different thought to this. I think it's not only uh, location, location, location anymore. It's about quality and lifestyle. Quality and lifestyle. Quality and lifestyle. And there's a reason for it. Because when Sri Lanka moves into high level of urbanization, the Ministry of Megapolis and the Statistics Department says that Sri Lanka only has 18% urbanization. I beg to differ on that uh, in all humbleness. I think we are almost around 40-45% between cities and urban areas. So when we move into urbanization, every area of the country is going to be developed. So every location is going to be a good location. So if somebody asked me 10 years ago, would you go and live in Malabe or Batramulla area or Talahe in Talangam area, would have probably said no. But nowadays, you see most of the developments coming up there. So people are looking at those locations, suburban Sri Lanka, tier two cities, like some people would dif differentiate it. So your development, urbanization, and the overall plan within the country will also have an impact on, on real estate. So we are very particular in order to understand what developers are trying to do. Are they taking a first move advantage? And are they doing justice? to what the urbanization plan of the country would be also. Also speaking at the event, Property Guru's first ever Sri Lankan Real Estate Personality of the Year for 2018, Pradeep Morais, expressed the following as well. Wikipedia and the UN say 18, 18.2%. Our government through the Megapolis Ministry says 42%, which is possibly a divergence in terms of what the nomenclature is. So even if you were to take an average of that, and put it down at about 30%, we are still way, way below the global average, which is around 50%. And even further down the line, when it comes to the average for countries of our size or similar, which can go up to about 86%. The ratio of condominium uh, buildings or apartments uh, to conventional housing is also ridiculously insignificant. It's about 5%. Land banks are fast diminishing, and high-rise condominia can deliver up to 20 times the efficiency of conventional housing. Economies of scale also render apartments more affordable than smaller size conventional dwellings. And the plethora of uh, approvals and procedures that you've got to go through in getting a building approved uh, can sometimes lead to a lot of difficulty and a lot of delays in, uh, in, in building individual units. Time for a short commercial break. Stock update is coming up right after this. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 61.98 points to close at 5,754.31 and the SMPSL20 dropped 110.87 points to close at 2,868.04. The turnover was 350.5 million rupees and 10.2 million shares were traded. Now let's take a look at today's Forex rates. And that's all the news we have for you today. Do join us again tomorrow at 7 p.m. for Biz Roundup. Until then, take care. Good night.